Hi everyone, thank you for understanding about our delay today. We were supposed to start at 4.30 Central, I had a little delay, and it's now 5.30, so we're up, we're running, uh, and we're in for today's lesson. A uh, little secret to those of you who wondered what happened, I got the opportunity to get a great secretary piece of furniture for free. I went up to get it. According to GPS, I had plenty of time, but it's Friday in Chicago and traffic happened between me leaving here and me getting back here. So what should have taken an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes uh, took closer to three and a half hours. So I got a piece of free furniture though. It's really cool. It's a really nice piece. I'm all excited, yay. All right, today we are doing set coat, faux cream color, faux metal 101, and then I'm gonna do a little furniture prep and uh, preparing for you, something you haven't seen me do in kind of a while because I got a new piece of furniture that I'm working on. It's actually for me. I'm doing something for me. I'm really excited, yay. Um, Emily Rima, nice to see you here. Thank you for joining me. Uh, all right, we're gonna start with set coat. Set coat is faux effects, what I would call basic paint that's not basic. Uh, faux effects makes set coat, let me pull this out, set coat. It is their paint priming product. No, it is not the same as Home Depot's paint and primer all in one. That's not the same thing. What this is, is a super high bonding, uh, super hard bonding, 100% acrylic paint product that's super highly pigmented. Um, I'm sorry for the noise in the background. You're going to hear uh, phones ringing around here today. I have to see if I can get my shared space person to turn down the answering machine just a little bit. Um, so anyway, set coat comes in metallic. It comes in a whole bunch of regular colors. Uh, set coat has a chart of their colors. Uh, Fofex has a set of, uh, chart of set coat colors. They also have a chart of amazing metallic colors. And let me show you what I mean by metallic. Like, oh, I don't know, metallic bronze. You've seen me use uh, them in the background. It's what I use as my paint base for all my finishes. Why do I use that? A, it's 100% acrylic, zero VOC, highly compliant, dries really hard. Hi everybody, hi Sandy, hi Emily, hi Jeff, nice to see you all here, hi Gina. I'm gonna turn this over for a minute so you can see my explanation. Of course, I didn't bring a pen with me, so I may have to duck out for a second so that you can hang for a second while I get, literally walked in the door from snagging that free piece of furniture 15 minutes ago, ran down here and tried to clear out enough space in my studio to do this, and I knew I was gonna forget something so of course it's a pen. Hang on just a second. Literally a second. I can I know you can hear me talking all the way across the room. Here's a pen. And it's good and dark. You'll be able to see it. Alright. I'm gonna bring this a little closer. I didn't even have a chance to try to set up the camera so that um hi Jenny Jennifer. I didn't even have a chance to try to set this up so that I wouldn't have shadow. I didn't even get a shot at that light, but I got my free secretary desk. That's my big deal. Hi, Sue. Nice to see you. Hi, Cindy. Okay, so back to set coat. So set coat, being 100% acrylic, was designed back in the day when latex paint was the go-to on walls. That's an issue because when you try to glaze or do plaster finishes on standard latex paint, if you caught a plain view, um, I don't know if everybody knows what I mean by plain view. I'm not talking down to somebody I want to make to y'all. I want to make sure you understand. If you see this side, uh, actually, so I should say the cross section. This side is the plane of a piece of paper. This edge here, that's the cross section. So when you lay down your paint on a surface, on, a, on basic latex paint, if you did a microscopic close-up of the cross-section of it, it looks like this. So when you glaze across it, you have a hard time because the glaze wants to catch in all of these little cracks and really grab up. 
However, set coat was designed to dry and level like oil paint, which is like this. So that when you glaze on it, the glaze slides across. When you put your plasters on it, your plasters move across it really, really easily. And therefore you don't have accelerated dry time. It dries to an eggshell, between an eggshell and a satin finish. I don't think I can see, yeah, there you go. You can see there's a slight glare on there, but you can see the sheen level. Um, really dries super hard, interior and exterior rated. Now, there is a difference between interior exterior rating and exterior rated paints only. So I'm gonna cover this because I get a lot of questions on this in private messages. You don't want to use exterior rated paint on interior furniture and walls. Why? Because it off gases all kinds of weird chemicals and it's designed to stay very flexible because exterior uh, paneling and wood has to expand and contract with weather. And there's kind of weird mildecides and all sorts of other stuff in there to protect it as a fully exterior product. Not set coat. Set coat can go interior and exterior, dries hard, but has flexibility if it was in an exterior situation where it needed to expand and contract. So you apply it on most surfaces the way you would apply any other interior paint or exterior paint. You can roll it, you can spray it, and you can brush it. I honestly don't think you all need to see me roll brush or, uh, spray or brush set coat because you've seen me do roll spray and brush of all kinds of products. I actually use it for my background on darn or everything. Uh, the metallics, I will say, some of the lighter colors can read a little translucent as well as the super dark, one, dark ones. So I will suggest if you're using a metallic set coat, like, let's see, what are some of my great colors that are sitting over here right next to me? Uh, a metallic champagne toast, gorgeous, warm, silvery color, by the way, um, that you use one layer underneath it of a similar color. And obviously, like anything else, if you're going to paint a red, it should have a gray base underneath to read the red better. I love that about it. Set coat has super high coverage with all that. I'm very impressed. The metallics dry hard. The adhesion's great. Now, what do you do if you have a wall that has a great color on it already and your client doesn't want to change the color, you don't need to change the color, and... It's not set coat. Well, we have one other product for set coat. Set coat clear. If you're gonna glaze a wall that somebody's painted with another paint, you don't know what it is, but the color is absolutely perfect for what you're doing, or you're gonna do plaster over, or you're gonna do uh, stucco lux or something along those lines, roll on a layer of set coat clear. It gives you that same beautiful finish that you have with set coat right over the existing paint. Therefore, you don't have to roll a whole new color in set coat. You just put the clear on and you have this great surface to work on. Now I'm gonna give you a couple other tips about set coat. Set coat does have a tint base. Hi Sherry, nice to see you. Um, set coat does have a tint base. However, every company's base for tinting is different. So if you need your set coat tinted to a Sherwin-Williams color or a Benjamin Moore color or a Pittsburgh paint color, go to the store, have them shoot the formula into a separate container and mix it yourself. That way you can tweak it as needed to get it to the right formulation. I usually, when I do that, start off at a 50% amount of the full formulation um, poured in and then mix as needed. Uh, excuse me, something popped up on my screen and it's blocking my view of myself because God knows I have to stare. Uh, the other thing is you don't want to have the paint companies mix this, paint stores mix this, because if you put set coat on a shaker, it turns into pudding. It changes the consistency. I'm not sure why it's something about the chemistry or the way the paint is made, but it shakes up and then gets really thick and it doesn't work well. You're better off taking the color, pouring it into the cans of paint yourself, 
using a squirrel mixer slowly to mix it up and getting it to the tint you want that's the Benjamin Moore Pittsburgh paint Martin Seenor color whatever brand that you're trying to match it to so don't ever put it on a shaker um, and of course then if you're not quite there you can use your faux colors faux cream colors to adjust the tint properly yes sherry really yeah absolutely hi cynthia sherry yeah absolutely if you put the faux color of i'm sorry a set coat on a shaker it turns really super thick and really miserable um i don't even know i <laughs> I only did it once and kind of just never used that paint except for in my studio. I don't remember if it ever actually settled down and became normal paint like again, but I certainly wouldn't want that to happen on a job site. That wouldn't make me happy. All right, so the next thing you heard me mention, faux cream color. Uh, faux FX has several color lines. Um, I'm not going to discuss the gold label because you actually must be trained in a uh, certified Fofx training center to use them however faux cream color is available to everyone faux cream color it com they come in lots and lots and lots and lots of colors some are interior rated some are exterior rated um, and you have to check which ones are exterior rated Although I can guarantee you that any trans oxide color is absolutely 100% exterior rated. We're not worrying about rating right now. All I'm saying is that don't buy one of the reds if it's not exterior rated. You use it outside, it'll fade. Doesn't matter inside. So I have white because I'm working on a blackboard and I thought that would make things a little easier. So first thing I'm gonna do is pour it out. So as you can see, it's got some body to it. Susie, can I come? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I appreciate all the kind words. Susie, you can show up and be an apprentice anytime because my apprentices don't do the fun stuff. My apprentices clean things. Um, okay, so here we go. You can see this has got body, and the reason it has body is because it's not only a colorant for all the faux effects products. You can put this in aquastone and plaster tax and in set uh, uh, set coat clear if you needed to tint it slightly you can put it in I'm looking around to see all my stuff you can put it in luster stone tint base you can put it in any of the faux effects products to get color but it also because it's it's got this body what that means is it's got uh, an acrylic binder in it so it's a standalone product meaning dun, 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 pull a stencil up Sorry for the back of my head, everybody. You can use it for detail painting, mural painting, stenciling, all kinds of stuff. Oh, and one little detail I did forget about set coat is that um, it's designed to be thinned up to 20% with water in standard use. You can thin it be to about 35% with water for spraying you want it to be the consistency that is good for your sprayer but it sprays really beautifully i know because i sprayed these boards with them this if the if the spraying looks bad it's on me it's not the product all right so i'm going to take a little bit of this you can see i've got it on my plate maybe you can't see it. there it is on my plate i'm going to take a stencil brush lightly dip in work a little paint into my brush and I'm gonna use this to stencil and obviously I didn't use any spray adhesive to keep my stencil down a little bit it goes a long way do not make this water waterier if you're going to stencil you want your stencil brush pretty darn dry but the other thing you can do is actually add water to it. I'm dipping in a cup off the screen. I can add this, I can use it to thin it down, and I can use this for details and lettering and all kinds of stuff, so. 
that is permanent. As soon as that's dry, it doesn't come off. It's got acrylic binders in it. It's an amazing product. It's something that most, you can't do, sorry about the back of my head, I'm trying not to throw paint brushes around the studio. It's something you can't do with most colorants because they don't have that binder in. You can use this, you can paint on clothing with this. It's like painting with other acrylic products. Once you get it on your clothes, if you get enough of it on, you know, paint a good bit on it, it doesn't come off. It's there permanently. So we've got that. That should explain most of what I was trying to get across with the, the faux colors. If you have any questions on uh, faux cream colors or set coat, feel free to punch them up here right now. Uh, I try to be pretty clear in my explanations. And by the way, yeah, this is what this looked like. Ignore my bleed. That was me having that stencil shift on me. So it was, it's a great product, both a faux color, faux, faux cream color, faux color, faux cream color. Sorry, too many products. I have too much stuff in my brain and sometimes I get them confused. We are specifically talking about faux cream color. Faux cream color is the one that has the acrylic binder in it. It is a terrific colorant and you can add it to all kinds of faux effects products and quite frankly, you can add it to other lines products as long as they're water-based. Uh, comes in, more colors than I can remember, but I gotta say it's got to be a good 30 colors in colorants and you can mix them all together and create new colors. We do that all the time. Um, wanted to take a moment before we get into the foam metal and then onto the stripping. I want to uh, thank everybody who has been recently signing up for our notifications. That's amazing. Again, you've been so excited to participate. I can't thank you enough for your participation. Um, we are moving around a lot of stuff with my business. I mean, like I'm moving, literally moving around a lot of stuff. I'm clearing out storage space, bringing in new pieces. So I've been a little irregular in my schedule. So I appreciate everybody staying with me with that, but at least it'll bring me new projects to work on with everybody. And, uh, as we see after we do with our foam metal, new piece of furniture I'm working on and, um, you'll get to see me going from beginning to end with that. Now, of course, if there are products that you want to see me demonstrate, don't hesitate to post it here. Send me a PM on my personal page if you're my friend. Send a PM into the business page if you'd like to do it there. More than happy to. Don't forget, I also run a furniture painting page specifically for those who want to paint per furniture at a professional level. It's called Painted Furniture, Fantastic and Fabulous and I love having you all here. Uh, the other question I got asked, and again, I know I'm kind of in the middle of what we're doing, but it's, sometimes it gives everybody a break. I get asked why I do this. Um, I'm not paid by faux effects to do this. I do this because I like to have people have great information. Um, the hardest part when I started learning to do this was that nobody told me stuff. Now, mind you, I started long before the internet, but quite frankly, the internet has a ton of really bad information too. So I don't want people to find out the hard way the stuff that I had to find out the, far, the hard way. Um, I want to give you as much good, clear, and chemically sound. Chemically sound is important. Good, clear, chemically sound painting advice. I'm not gonna tell you how to paint it. I want you to have really good information on why it will work. Uh, what's the difference between set, co set coat and old world finishing paint? Set coat is our high bonding, 100% acrylic paint primer product. It, you put it on everything. Old world finishing paint is a mineral product that's designed to go over bare wood, painted wood, or paint but it is not a, it's, it has to have something that goes over it to bind it. It is a chalky finish, easy to distress product and must have glaze or top coat or wax over it to completely bond it to the surface. I hope that answers your question, Jeff. All right, I will keep watching for your questions. In the meantime, I've pontificated enough and we're gonna move on to faux metal. All right, I have two colors of faux metal here. Faux metal 
is one of the most unique products that Faux Effects makes. It is water-based, it's more like it's waterborne, and like the particles are encapsulated and, and they, it's carried on a water-based solvent. Um, metal paint. It's not designed to be top coated. It's not designed to be thinned. If you do, it has real medical metal particles in it. So actually, if you top coat it with a water-based top coat, you're likely to have some weird tarnishing stuff happen. Um, it's very, very liquid when it's brand new and you always keep it stirred up because if you don't keep it stirred up, it gets thick and chunky like this and you can't add stuff to it to reconstitute. Um, I had long conversations with Faux Effects because on my tech sheet it said thin 20% to spray. Hey Lori, nice to see you. Um, thank you, Gina. That was the word. I, I can only remember so much, but yes, water aqueous. And that's a hard thing for me to say and read at the same time. And if you notice, I'm doing this because yes, I do have bifocals. Um, long conversation with faux effects of like, okay, well, if I can thin it, what do I thin it with to spray it? Can't thin it really thin it with denatured alcohol because it turns it blackish. Can't thin it with water because it turns it green. So really it's not ever meant to be thin. You can reconstitute it slightly with a little denatured alcohol, but if you try to thin it down with denatured alcohol, you're gonna have it turning black. Um, if it gets hard and chunky, like you see in here, and actually this is still pretty thin compared to what my true hard and chunky looks like. Um, don't throw that away because you can use it like good old fashioned rub and buff and dry brush with it or take your finger and brush highlights on it. It's very, very cool stuff. However, when you first get it, it's liquid. Hi Diane, nice to see you here. It's liquid, liquidy gooey gooey. gooey. I'm, I'm afraid to tilt it because I'm, Last time I tilted something on screen, I dumped a whole wad of plaster text on my shoes. So let's try not to do that again. Uh, you can see it's sort of liquid in there. I'm really not going to pour it on my feet. The coverage on this is outstanding. It's very opaque, rarely requires a second coat. Now I'm gonna tape up a couple. I'm gonna do this in an interesting way. Oh, yep, Diane, if you've got any moisture in these at all, use them like rub and buff. If they've gotten hard, 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 um, quite frankly, you're kind of out of luck. Some of you may recognize this piece of wood I'm strapping up from leftover from our uh, stain and seal demo. I reuse stuff. Otherwise, I'd go broke just trying to put things together. Hi, Lori. Nice to see you. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna do with the liquid one because I'm not sticking my fingers in the gooey one. I'm trying not to do that. You all remind me to wear my gloves and then I forget every single time. But look, I have a glove today. Hopefully I actually remember to put two in my pocket. There's no guarantee. Two, how lucky can I get today? So I can Take this on in its liquid form, and even if it's liquid form, I can still get chunks in it, um, but it's so liquidy, the chunks kind of work out, and then you can work it out of whatever you're painting. Watch this, folks. Look at that coverage. Look at that opacity. Now, the cool thing is, when this dries, you can take a piece of terry cloth and buff it. It'll get shinier. This is made to bond to metal. I've done bars with it that had ugly brass railings that were all beaten up. I cleaned up the brass, took some of this in silver, painted over the railing in the trim, I did that last one I did was eight years ago. Needs a couple touch-ups now because they've got, it's in a salon, so it gets acetone knocked on it, but it wears hard, 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 hard. 
Don't top coat it. You'll actually cause problems. Leave it like this. It'll work just fine. And I'm just going to use what I still have on this. You can stencil with it just like you can with anything else. I took a clean stencil brush because I don't want to waste. And I'll put that brush down so I don't accidentally paint myself in the nose. Look at that coverage there. Look at the opacity, and there is barely anything on my brush. Super, super opaque. I'm gonna try to zoom in, although last time I did this, I turned the camera sideways. Let me flip that up. Look at that opacity. I'm actually just gonna bring the camera forward. <laughs> Look at that opacity, super gold. And the same here on the metal. Look at how opaque that is. It is absolutely awesome stuff. Um, and again, just like I did with the other one, you can put a brush in it and use it for detail painting. Let me uh, wipe the extraneous water off of this. I can take it in on a paint brush and now, I'm not getting as much distance out of this as I did when I did the thin down um, uh, faux cream color because I'm working with an older jar and it's a little bit dried out. Obviously, I'm not painting anything really, really complicated here, so you'll just have to forgive my little doodles. This is what I doodle when I'm on the phone. I don't doodle pictures of anything. I just swirl around my pen. Um, is it clean up with so soap and water? It absolutely is clean up with soap and water. It's awesome. Uh, yes, it does bottle. Yes, it is exterior rated. Yes, it does bond to metal. Don't, no, do not top coat this. You will not be happy if you top coat it. It will turn whitish to green. Uh, ask me how I know. <laughs> Uh, we had that, I actually taught a student how to do that, and unfortunately she was very heavy-handed and very heavy-handed with both the product and the top coat, and whereas I had done it light and it didn't do anything, she did it and turned whitish green on her, and I had to uh, work her through fixing that because neither one of us knew what was going to happen. Um, all right, so we have done these three products. So today we have discussed so far set coat in solid colors metallic colors and in clear don't ever forget your clear the clear is a lifesaver in many ways we have covered faux cream colors and how they have their acrylic binder in them uh so the it bonds to metal with no prime match absolutely bonds to metal with no prime match um i would say set coat not necessarily set coat has Sometimes you need prime etch under it, but that's for something like Unformica. We're not talking about that. We're talking about, you caught me off guard, so now my mind shot over there. Sorry, everybody. So, no prime etch under um, foam metal. No need for it. Brush marks? Yeah, you can get brush marks. You can get brush marks with anything, but you've got time. It dries slower, so you can smooth them out. Um, honestly, if you watch what I just did, very little brush marks. I'm trying to get it so it's not glary, which is not easy. Very few brush marks, um, and it has a nice open time. Now this stuff will look dry, and it's not. It has a slower drying time. You need a little extra time, because if I go back like this, yeah, I know, I didn't, I took off my gloves, so there we go. Screwed up the manicure. <laughs> back to this, we were, our other color was thing we're working on faux cream colors 100 percent acrylic binders in here can be used as a colorant can be used as a standalone product and can be added to all faux effects products and the last one was faux metal which is the coolest weirdest uh metal bonding metallic paint product that faux effects makes I don't know how to describe it other than as a metallic paint product because it's sort of, it's not re regular paint, but it's not just plain metal. 
it has got this stuff that it's suspended in a fluid and it's got real metals in it and it's very cool. Comes in pale gold, rich gold, copper, bronze, silver. Very, very cool. Um, a little goes a long way. I rarely buy big jars of it. Um, is faux metal thin enough to spray out of the can? Brand new, yes, but I would suggest you strain it because there can be chunks in it. You don't want that to clog up your sprayer. Um, but yes, it can be sprayed, but you can't thin it. So don't try to do it with an old can and don't try to thin it down. Um, would I say the coverage is better than Modern Masters? It's completely different product from Modern Masters. It only comes in these few colors. The coverage is 100% opaque. Modern Masters is a mica-based uh, acrylic paint. It's got mica and colorant suspended in it, so it's not the same as faux metal at all. You won't have the same reaction. It's a completely different product. Um, I'm not sure I'm making it clear why it is. Um, it doesn't dry that. Oh, gotta get you some copper. I might have it. Uh, is is it like the is it like the super hide? You say silver hide. I'm assuming you mean super hide. Um, even a, a better coverage than that. And Fofex doesn't make the super hide anymore. So if you want really super deep coverage, um, really fast, you want the faux metal. And it's just a cool product. Sometimes you just have to get your hands on this stuff to see it. It does come in 16 ounce jars. So uh, if you're interested in it and want to try it, I would buy a 16 ounce jar and test it out. It's really cool. I, I can't explain it other than it's like no other paint that Faux Effects makes. Hey, Melanie, nice to see you join us. Um, Gigi, if I'm not making myself clear uh, the difference of the two paints, let me know and I'll work on clarifying it. If I'm not making it clear here, you can keep hammering away at me in private and I will work to make it 100% clear. All right, I am now, now that we've gone through our faux effects, we're gonna kind of do something different, something that I haven't done for a while. Um, I'm gonna walk you through some of my prep pro, uh, processes. Today I'm gonna work on stripping a piece of old furniture because, let me turn this around and you can see the mess down at my end of the studio. Let's see if I can get it in so you can see what I got going on here. Uh, does faux metal stick to plastic? Absolutely, it sticks to like darn near anything. Okay, what I got for myself is I got a vanity. I need this in, uh, for my bedroom because I'm tired of doing, um, I'm tired of doing my makeup in my dining room. So, uh, I have found a great one that needed a restoring. I know you've seen me bop back and forth. Um, and it's an old shellac finish. You can tell because of the very fine alligatoring that's happening. Alligatoring means that it's crazed. Uh, I'm gonna bring this closer and kind of aim it down more on what I'm doing so you don't have to look at me. And there's several ways of doing stuff. I can take a heavy duty commercial stripper and go down and try to get down to the bare wood. I wanna see what the wood looks like under here. So I'm gonna go at it a little differently today. Um, this is my iced tea. I wish it was something stronger, but I only uh, do iced tea on camera. Who knows, maybe I'll change that at some point. So I'm working today with something called Formby's Wood Refinisher. Refinisher. I've used this a lot in the past. And what it does is it melts down the old finish and the old varnish and the old shellac and doesn't lift the stain. So I'll, and it'll melt everything smooth back down into the wood grain. So I'll be able to see wood grain. And you can see this surface is different. And these arms here that hold a mirror are much darker. And that's why I want to strip it this way first to see if all the wood is uniform because I can't tell right now. It almost looks like it was made out of two different pieces and kind of hob hobbled together. And if that's the case, once I've stripped it down, I'll let it dry, I'll seal it up, and I'll paint the whole thing a solid color. But if it's not, I might keep it wood grained and just do a little old world finishing paint on it to pop the colors down. You can see I'm putting on completely different gloves. These are professional stripping gloves. 
because all of these solvents can be really, really rough. <laughs> They'll melt certain gloves that you don't want to use this with latex gloves or some of the lightweight um, hair dressing gloves. And you either pour it into a metal bowl or into a glass bowl. Pour it into plastic, you're going to melt the plastic. And it's kind of stinky stuff. Um, I have this well ventilated. I'm about to turn on my fan. Um, normally I would have on my respirator, but you won't be able to understand me with my full respirator on, so I'm not going to do this too long without it on. I'll just talk to you and watch you, walk you through some of what I'm doing and then go back. So you can brush it on, pour it on. You just need something that's going to be um, able to withstand it. Don't use a sponge brush on it. The sponge brush will melt it. And then you're going to go back in with steel wool. Um, for those of you who've never used steel wool before, you buy it like this. Looks like the old SOS pads. And you buy it at the hardware store and it comes in different grades. Um, this stuff will evaporate pretty quickly so you're going to want to go back in but you can see it's pulling already and it's going through the old finish and down to the wood. Now this may take me several passes to get this down because this is pulling pretty hard. Sometimes I have an old finish. This has got more varnish on it not shellac. When I do an old shellac finish it just melts off and I'm like wiping it away like a piece of, you know, just like water off the tabletop. But you can see it's kind of melting this stuff down. <laughs> Gina says, hurry. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is gonna take a time. The good thing is I don't have to worry about it. I could, I could stop right there like this, walk away from it and I won't have ruined it. Why? Because I'm going to come back and smooth more, but I don't know if you can see this. It's You can see it's sort of gumming up like right here where I just put my brush. I got a fan on. I got windows open. Do not do this in an unventilated area. You will end up stoned out of your mind and lose a whole lot of brain cells. Um, I have this set up so that all the fumes are blowing away from me. So this is working just fine on the top. I did tons of stuff with this stuff. Things that I wanted to keep wood grain and stain on and didn't want to sand the crap out of and didn't want to take like good old fashioned navel jelly stripper on. No, I know, navel jelly. I know what that sounds like. No, it's not the stuff that goes with navel lint. It's like basically like a boat stripper. That, of course, being Friday, being that I've been on the road doing all kinds of crazy things, makes me start thinking about oh, strippers with nautical names. And... I mean, like the dancer kind of stripper, sorry. My weird sense of humor is kicking in. Maybe it's this stuff. All right, the other thing I'm gonna do so that you can see it a little closer is I'm gonna put some of this up here and see what happens, see how it takes this finish because this part is like virtually black. It's so old. taking it down it is lightening it up now this stuff is flammable it is caustic if you get it on your skin it's gonna sting um, that's why I have the gloves up to my elbows on I don't want to get hurt by this and the only reason I'm reaching this far across it right now is because I want to keep this in camera. And this is definitely, right now, darker, but I may have to work this a lot more. Um, my steel wool comes in everything. You can get it up to super coarse, which I think is a three or a four grade, to super fine, which is a quadruple zero. So you can see that the table top here, the vanity top, this is 
the green is coming up really nicely and I can see it really well. But on here, on the arm, on the, the support arm, I'm gonna have to work on that a little bit. Uh, this table also needs some serious repair work. I know that, but I'm not gonna do any of the repair until after all the stripping's done. Why? Because this stuff will dissolve the glue. Um, this is not something, you can't do the same thing. If, I know a lot of people don't like harsh chemicals. Well, sometimes harsh chemicals are what you need. Um, quite frankly, you can't do this kind of work with old fat, you know, with the, the, the low odor, organic, whatever, friendly um, zip strip, I mean a uh, citrus strip. It's not going to just dissolve this stuff and leave you the grain that way. It'll take everything off and it takes forever and it doesn't take it evenly and then you end up sanding the crap out of everything. Um, I think I'm going to reach over, pardon my back. This is working really well, actually. Um, I wipe back with rags or cheesecloth and stuff. This is why I go through so much cheesecloth. Um, and as you can see, I've gone through a lot in this bowl. The evaporation level on this is high. That's why I don't pour out a big bowl of it, because I would lose half of the bowl to evaporation before I even used it. So I'm going to take this again, go back in here, soften up some stuff. And wipe it back. Take some of the goop off. See, you see what's coming off. It's old finish. But you can also see that the tables underneath here is still really nice. If I wanted to, I could stop, let this cure up, however I like it. Um, I'm going to work on this some more, but I think I'm going to not do too much more tonight because, quite frankly, I don't have my mask on and I don't want to lose any more brain cells than I did during college. Let me see how much more comes down off of this. Okay, we're going to have some work on this, but it is working. Now, when I'm done with this, I leave all my rags out flat and open to dry because it will combust. If I needed to keep things open or use it again another time, you see everything's starting to get kind of sticky. That's what happens. It's the old finish on the rags and on my gloves catching to things. But if I needed to um, keep this, like if I needed to store my rags instead of letting them air out, um, I put them in a tin can with a lid on them and in water. That way they don't combust. Um, and uh, super cautious ninny that I am, I don't say, I say ninny in a loving way. Um, if I have these in a tin can in water, I still take them outside and put them on a cement surface just because, God forbid, I did something wrong. Um, chemical disposal is different in every state. However, once these have dried, uh, the solvents evaporated, you're fine to throw it away. Um, the reason I would have it in a can stored is that I brought these from a job. I would have to take the rags away, take the pieces away, store them until I could dispose of them properly at home. Uh, and if I couldn't get to disposing of them right away, again, the can with water in them and a lid on it keeps anything bad from happening. Well, we got this coming. I think the uh, top of the dresser or top of the vanity has gotten some sun bleaching on it because as I take this off here, I'm getting a very rich color. Uh, you all can't see it on camera, but it is... It's a really nice rich color. It's going to take a lot more work and a lot more of my form bees, but I think I'm going to be really pleased with this. Uh, sometimes I use the brush, sometimes I just dip the steel wool right in and work with that. There we 
gotta take some of that off. Oh yeah, that's taking it down nicely. Again, you can see what comes off. Um, I did tells. Oh, uh, they caught on fire. Yep, you gotta be. Well, there was bleach involved. So, oh, Gina, don't 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 get bleach in this stuff. We don't need to create any kind of weird, crazy chemical reactions. We're already a little bit of mad scientists, and it's why I tend, I work in water-based as much as I humanly can. Um, although there are times, sometimes you just have to dig into the old stuff. It's unavoidable. I, I've come to accept that sometimes I just gotta use the stinky stuff. Now, I'm not ans looking up and answering questions right now because I really want to pay attention to where the chemicals are going so they don't go in a bad place on me. Um, but if I miss your questions while I'm doing this, uh, I, will I will, of course, read everything afterwards, answer them, share links if you want to know where I get any of this stuff, uh, answer any questions. Um, as I'm winding up, uh, just to let everybody know, my future class schedule is coming up, and in the fall, I will be teaching uh, our amazing 30 finish five-day class with Martin Allen Hirsch at the Faux Finish School. It's called Timeless Creations. Uh, we do a special business dinner involved in that, and that's something that nobody else does these days, and that's a Every finish that we sell or we teach is highly sellable. Most of them are good for walls, floors, and furniture. When they're not, we tell you. I'm also doing a uh, new furniture class with Martin called uh, New World Finishing. It is three days, 25 or 26 finish samples out of that. You get to spend three fun-filled days watching me make messes. And then this year's IDOL convention, which is in uh, North Carolina, near High Point. I'm gonna be teaching another furniture class. It's a one-day class. So, Louisville, North Carolina, uh, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, High Point, North Carolina. I'm gonna be teaching a lot this fall. I hope to see some of you in my classes. It's been terrific having you here. I'm gonna let things evaporate, clean things up, make sure that my studio doesn't blow up and then go upstairs and make my family some dinner. Thanks everybody for coming with me. Thank you for handling the delay and thanks for letting me chat away. If I've missed anything, I will get it in the, in the messages that you posted here and don't hesitate to PM me anything if you have any questions about what I've done. Thanks everyone, have a great weekend, bye.